Alright, hi everybody, my name is Steve and today we are going to take a journey through 500 million years of evolution and discover where we come from. I want to start with some creatures that lived on the bottom of the ocean. This is at a time when there were no animals on land anywhere. All the animals alive lived in the ocean. And here's an example of five of them. Now of these five creatures, three of them are completely extinct. There's nothing left of them at all. Two of them have living descendants today. Now, each of them lived a little bit differently. Here we have a creature called a trilobite. It lived on the bottom of the ocean and it swam around and ate from the bottom. Here we have a creature called Wawaxia. Wawaxia actually scraped along the bottom just like that, and these spines that you see were for protection. Here we have a creature called Opabenia. Now, Opabenia is one of my very favorites. It's got this long, oops, this long trunk-looking thing, but it actually wasn't hollow. It was a solid piece, and it just used it almost like an arm to pick things up and put food into its mouth, which is right about there on the very bottom of the creature. These five odd-looking things here are eyes. It actually had five eyes on the top of its head. Here's a creature called Anomalocaris. Now, all of these are about the size they would have been in life, except Anomalocaris, which would have been two or three feet long. It was by far the largest creature alive, and it was the Tyrannosaurus Rex of its time. Um, it had a great big mouth down here that worked a little bit like the doors you see in science fiction movies. Instead of just sliding open or closed, they actually opened like this and closed like that, like in a circle. And it would crush food in a circle. And here we have a creature called Pacaya. Now, Pacaya was a very small swimmer. Um, not very much protection, doesn't look like it has uh, much of a future, but if you look at the back of Pacaya, you'll see this line. This line is what would one day become our spinal cord. And this is a creature that lived in the ancient ocean and actually is our ancestor. All of these five creatures, this is the one that eventually would become us. So let's take a look at that spinal cord and see how it changed over time. We're going to move forward in time. Uh, several hundred million years to a creature called Tiktaalik. I have a picture of it right here. And if you look at Tiktaalik, it's an odd sort of looking creature because it has very much a crocodile sort of head, but a fish body. However, when you look at the fins, you'll see that the fins are actually underneath the body and are helping it to, to, to kind of push itself up. Tiktaalik was actually a creature that lived in the ocean, or in the water, in the, in the rivers actually, not in the ocean. Um, but this creature that lived in the rivers uh, had a crocodile head. Now why? Well, because it was able to move its neck back and forth. This spinal cord that we just looked at in Pacaya went right into uh, the crocodile type head and it was the first creature that actually had a neck. And so there you see how the spinal cord has changed over time and now it's uh, going from the body to the head and the head is actually able to turn back and forth. With so let's move forward a few more million years. Tixalix ancestors took to the land. For the first time now we have land creatures. And some of those land creatures uh, started to evolve into things that look a lot more familiar to us. Here we have a creature that is actually a modern creature. This is a modern chimpanzee skull. And you can see that it's got a jutting jaw. It's got these big eyebrow ridges. And you can see the brain is eh, it's kind of roundish, but still fairly small compared to the head. All right. <coughs> That's a modern chimpanzee. Let's take a look at this one over here. This is a modern human being. Now, the modern human being, you can see, is a lot different from the chimpanzee. It doesn't have the brow ridges. Instead of the jutting jaw, we've got the jaw that's much further back toward the head. It's almost a flat face. And the biggest difference, of course, is the skull and, and the brain size. And you can see that this brain really takes up a lot of the creature's head room because it's got a very large brain. So now let's take a look at a creature that's in between these two. All right, here we have a creature called Australopithecus. Afarensis. Now, it's a, a creature that is uh, more famously known as Lucy. Lucy was a fossil that was found in Africa, lived about two and a half to three million years ago. Lucy was not found with the skull, but this is another um, member of that same species, Australopithecus afarensis. When you compare Lucy to the chimpanzee and the human, you see that it has some things in common with the human, some things in common with the chimpanzee. But the biggest things in common with the chimpanzee are this jutting jaw, the eyebrow ridges, and especially the brain. If you look at the size of the brain, they're very similar. You can see the brain case of Australopithecus. You can see the brain case of the chimpanzee, both clearly much smaller than the human brain case. This is essentially a creature that had a chimpanzee's head. But there's one crucial difference between the Australopithecus and the chimpanzee, and let's take a look. If you turn the chimpanzee skull over, what you're going to discover is something called the foramen magnum. And the foramen magnum is where that spinal cord that we've been talking about goes into the creature's head. 
In the chimpanzee, it's in the back. It also tilts backward a little bit, and that's because the chimpanzee walks on all fours, and it needs to be able to hold its head up while walking on all fours, and so the spinal cord needs to go in like that at an angle. If you look at a modern human, it also has the form in magnum, that same hole, but look where it is. It's in the very bottom. In this case, the spinal cord is going straight up into the creature because we walk on two feet and we've got this very large head and we need to be able to balance it on top. And so um, the skull of the human has the form and magnum on the very bottom. Well, what about the Australopithecus aberrantes? Let's take a look. Remember, a very chimpanzee looking skull, but the form and magnum, which is not drilled out here, but you can see where it would be in this cast, is right in the bottom in the same position as the human skull. It turns out that we have here in Australopithecus afarensis, Lucy, a creature that walked almost exactly the way we walk, and yet had a chimpanzee skull. This is a big surprise to scientists at the time because they always assumed that our big brains evolved first, and then we learned to walk with feet. So this is an example of uh, something that scientists didn't expect. It was out there, they discovered it, and we learned something new that we never knew before, and that's our evolution part. Thanks for watching.